Well, one is never really such a man, so one should never really identify himself as such a such a kook. Just look around yourself right now. This very awareness that sees here and now is the divine life awareness God has of himself, of his own qualities and attributes. And just as quickly as one acknowledges this fact, accepts this fact, he automatically stops attempting to be the one who would have this awareness do things for him. Just as soon as one accepts the identity one is, he stops all of the planning and calculating and thinking which is intended to have awareness show that old bastard exactly what that old bastard wants to see. And that one is exactly the bastard, fatherless, hypothetical, fictitious, the means by which the real, the real genuine identity is made plain. The old possessor you, listen now, the old possessor you doesn't have the strength to give up his claim to awareness. Mortal mind doesn't have the strength to, to deny itself or to put itself off. Mortal mind cannot sacrifice himself nor put himself off. It is an impossible struggle if one attempts to do that. Honesty, honesty is the only way. The honest acknowledgement right here, right now, that God really is all is the only power necessary to overcome the old identity, the ego, because such an acknowledgement precludes the possibility of an absurd identity to, to put off in the first place. There is no other way which is half so final and effortless. Friends, we are talking uh, about something very basic, We're talking about identity. As awareness, how does awareness act? Awareness is aware. Awareness knows it is the functioning and action of mind. It knows it is nothing of itself, but that mind, omnipotent, is being aware. Mind is one. Consequently, there is one awareness. This awareness is the one and only awareness of being. Awareness itself is motiveless, desireless. It is the consciousness of being. Awareness is motiveless, desirelessness, consciousness of completeness. Awareness has no responsibilities nor duties. It cannot be possessed by another, for there are no others. As awareness alone, the old concepts of mortal mind, of build, shrink from nothingness to nothingness. As awareness only, the fears and temptations, the trials and tribulations of Bill dry on the vine for a lack of nourishment. They wither and die, and the place thereof shall know them no more. Or if they appear, they're there for a reason to be understood. As awareness, and awareness is understanding going on. As awareness totally the I that is aware is none but God. As awareness, there is but one, and that one is perfection, being itself alone. And awareness is the knowledge of this fact. The awareness that listens to these words right now is the knowledge of that fact. And the singing in the heart this moment is the sound that says, yes, yes, this is so, this is true. God is all. God mine is this very life I am. 
awareness I am, and I may rest in the center and circumference of my being. Awareness I am, and may joy in the beauty of my identity. Awareness I am, and may behold the new Jerusalem forever. Awareness I am, without desire or motive. Awareness I am, without a mission, without a purpose. Aimless, as the Oriental would say, sweet aimless. Awareness I am, without a personal sense of self to tell my stories to. Awareness I am, without a dream, without a dream to be awakened from, or a dream to dispel, and without a calling to awaken others. God is all there is to others, and God is very perfectly being what others are. This awareness has no mission to go forth and heal a perfect universe. You know, saying these things, this occurs. It comes to me to say this moment. The purpose of awareness is that God may be aware that God is the perfect one. <laughs> and of course God is. That I cannot help but do because I am awareness. Whatever it appears I do is for no reason or purpose than to declare God's handiwork unto the very self I am. And reader, those words are true for you. The you I talk to is myself. The you you listen to this moment, the sounds you listen to this moment are yourself. Your heart's declarations to yourself. It has to come one way or another to be understood. Well, now back to the old question of supply. How does one go about tending his home and his family and, and all of his obligations? Jesus, in the shortest verse in all that beautiful, lovely book of Thomas, Jesus said, become passers-by as a passer-by as awareness who steadfastly beholds perfection. That's how we go about our family duties and obligations, as desireless, knowing the kingdom is full, as motiveless, knowing the kingdom is complete, as unpossessed, unhindered, unbound, unfettered, and boundless awareness itself. That's how we go about doing it. And we can't help it because we are it. And after, after the argument between the heart and the intellect, Jesus said, after you found, then you'll be troubled. Yes. After one hears this, it's accepted for a time, and then finally the intellect comes along to argue with it, and that's the time of trouble. But then after the trouble, then ye shall reign over the all. How else could one reign over the all, except as awareness within which all things appear, in which all things are. And whose awareness is it? <laughs> God's. God's. God's awareness. And who is the devil? Who is the old man? Who is the ego? Why, the me who says this is my awareness. Never, never was that so. There never was a me who said this is my awareness. It was only the belief of a me. And why the belief? in order that I might know what beliefless is. Why the belief of a separate selfhood that I might know the real selfhood that God is? Well, some of the talks are, are soft. Some are like the river that flows slowly and softly, usually. <laughs> Sometimes it flows turbulently to the ocean. But some talks, some talks are like thunder. Some talks are like the sound of, of an explosion, of a shell.